actually playing Henry V in Manchester, the Royal Exchange at the moment, and was on stage last night giving that speech pretty much as we were squishing oh. the Frenchies. <laughs> How amazing. <laughs> I tell you, I think we should start, in an effort to make this show more classy, we should start each week with maybe a, a passage enunciated by your good self. Yeah, yeah, A yeah. rousing show, a, a speech that just kind of, <laughs> but this kind of proud and nationalistic. Yeah, yeah, certainly a thought. And we can, we can end with Jerusalem. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> every week. Yeah, Oh, this yeah. is good, this is great. I'll completely forget about it by next week, but never mind. Um, so anyway, we, each week, uh, the reason I have these, what? Can we play a trail and then ask him? Oh, go on. Oh! Press the buttons, woman, Can that's your job. I have a distant memory that this show used to be about music, and <laughs> the reason I have my cronies here in the studio is not just to uh, conflab with them, but for them to bring in tunes and recommend music to me that I may be unfamiliar with or have simply forgotten. Uh, Rufus, you're bringing a choice first up this week. What have you got? I've got a uh, track by Common. His new album, Finding Forever, came out. Uh a few weeks ago. Uh, he's one of the uh, artists to whom I rush to the shops or the uh, computer to get his new stuff. And this is, a, this is a, 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 a duet he's doing with Lily Allen, who sometimes annoys me because she does the slight Rex Harrison, am I talking, am I singing thing that Kate Nash does, well, that kind of slightly gets on my nerves. But in this, she, uh, she, she, she really kind of matches Common, and it's a track called Driving Me Wild. Common and Lily Allen driving me wild uh, from this new Common album. I think that's coming out as a single, isn't it? It is, yeah. And if you are a fan of the hip hoppery, then uh, in today's uh, pigeonhole tracks, we'll be delving into a couple of other recent uh, hip hop uh, tunes and um, the like. So Rufus, I know, I mean, you're a super posh man, but mm. uh, I suspect rather like Prince William, you're into the hip hop. <laughs> I am. And it's yeah, slightly but... incongruous and a little bit embarrassing. A little bit. I, yeah, I will embarrass my children, my parents, and my grandparents, and everybody who knows me by my liking of the hip hop. But um, I don't see any shame in it. No, I'm no. proud of my hip. Yeah, absolutely. And now, um, obviously, uh, regular Steve Show fans uh, will know that Tiny Little Dan used to live with me. He was my flatmate. We didn't live in the biblical sense. Used to? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, That's I, a big revelation, isn't it? It is a huge revelation for um, people who care about such things. Um, <laughs> my parents, chiefly. And um, <laughs> so obviously if you're a little bit worried that I'm not, how am I going to pay the rent, is what the people are immediately emailing and texting. <laughs> uh, or rather, how am I going to pay the mortgage, as I say, because he's, uh, you know, he's, and I have to say, you had mates rates there, mate, so welcome to the real world. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good luck. But yeah, uh, <laughs> you've moved in, you've moved in with a woman. Yes. Um, you are living uh, in Scene. Yes, I am, yeah, yeah. And um, it was interesting because a little sort of thought occurred to us as you were packing up your belongings. Oh, it was and emotional. It was emotional, it was touching. And uh, Rufus, you're going to face a similar problem because I know you're moving in with your chick. Mm. Right? You're getting married, of course, you're getting hitched, mm -hmm. the old ball and chain, etc. <laughs> and um, and uh, the question is this, what do you do with all the old uh, photographic albums and whatnot, the remnants of past relationships? What do you do with them? You've kept them there in a lower drawer, okay, photos of you in gay Paris, right, with a previous flame, okay? Mm -hmm. I don't know if this is going to get you in trouble. Harry, you're in a similar situation, man. You've moved in with a chick. Put them on the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is it. Well, there you go. I mean, Problem you know, solved. that's, you know, he's uh, he's very much the man of his house. That's the thing about Harry. Whereas, <laughs> Dan, you know, you are obviously under the thumb. No, I suspect. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've got likewise. Lot, yeah, nothing. Um, what do you do, you know? Do you, do you just uh, get, I mean, because if you just set fire, I mean, I imagine you're going to be having a big ceremonial thing where you burn all your pornography and whatnot, or the remnants of, all your condoms, the remnants of your, of your, uh, <laughs> remnants. <laughs> the, the remnants of your singledom. Mm. Don't, no, don't burn it. Don't you know. burn it. Yeah, no, exactly. Don't burn so, it. Um, or pop it on eBay or whatever. And um, and so, you know, but what happens to all the photos and evidence of the past? See, you thinking... know, is it going to be Stalin-like removed from history? Well, I, I thought, because th there are places I've been where I've got photos of, of, of that, but I, I thought if I just get a small black square of card yeah. and put it over the head of anybody who is yeah. uh, no write, longer in my life. Just write hate on her <laughs> face <laughs> in, yeah. all the, in all the photos. Because then I'll yeah. get, you know, then I'll get uh, whatever current lady is in my life um, on my side. <laughs> sure, Surely. Yeah, yeah. I would have thought it was one of those situations in which it's easier to be famous because, you know, uh, those photos of, you know, Mick Jagger and Anita Pallenberg. I bet Keith Richards thinks, oh, I'm really cross about you and <laughs> Anita, you know, but, well, it's, you know, they just put in a new compilation of photos of the 20th century, so, yes, you know, it's yes. not as if that can easily be forgotten. It's fine if you're a part of history, yeah, yeah but yeah, when yeah, you're yeah. not, because, you see, if you, if, you, if you take them with you and then they're uncovered yes. by, the, uh, by the current squeeze, then... Yeah. yeah, but Steve, surely those relationships make you the person you are today, and that's the person that they've fallen in love with. Hey, you understand that as a fella, mm. oh. but some of the some <laughs> of the ladies, Jude, listen to me, woman. Some of the ladies, <laughs> some of the ladies, and I'm not suggesting, so <laughs> but but some of the ladies find it very difficult to accept that there was a pass. You know, Sammy, you are a chick. A what uh, what's your take on this? Um, it would hurt. It wouldn't. It would hurt me if you got them out and looked at them. 
Or if he had them up on yeah, the Yeah, if bridge. you found them, just him looking at them crying, <laughs> just gently <laughs> weeping, saying, I'm sorry, what have I done? <laughs> but I, I want to keep my stuff from my past, so I think you should have kind of a box in the loft somewhere. You both put your stuff in. Oh, it's in a shared box. boxes yeah. that you keep away together. Uh, so you do keep it, but you keep it together to prove that, you know... It is a thing that you're doing together and you like each other, but you can't forget the past, it's very important. So a bo uh, uh, so it's two boxes in the loft, his yeah, and hers? Yeah. And if, if you have a big row, you can just say, I'm going to go and look at the boxes! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, good, we've got that sorted. So, um, there we are, Dan. <laughs> that's rugby right. and relationships. The agenda. Rugby relationships, that's done before the news. Mm. Imagine what's going to happen in the second, uh, we got nothing. <laughs> um, alright, so, uh, I want to squeeze you one more tune before the news. Uh, XTC, play it. From their 1986 album Skylarking, that's Dear God by XTC. We'll be delving into the pigeonhole after the news. Belly. Feed the tree. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> come on, it's hard not to say the word belly and have some fun with it. Um, uh, yeah, it's a Steve Show, BBC Six Music. Thanks for tuning in. Um, it's very much a show about music, but it's also about uh, people and about good times. <laughs> and, um, and I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. I, uh, I stay up a bit late. I don't like to stay up late anymore. I'm getting old. Um, but as I said, I went to a club. Um, it's always nice to... Not, not, uh, if, if anyone uh, who was in the club who came up and said uh, that they uh, they liked my work, then uh, very nice. Thank you very much for doing that, and uh, I'm always happy to shake a hand. But there's always one in a club, not from a woman, who maybe someone else will shake their hand and go, oh, I think I like your work. And there's one go, who are you? I don't know who you are. I don't know. Like, like, sort of aggressive. Like, I was the one who was dancing around going, well, I've been on the telly. Kind of like, annoyed, angry with me. Oh, I don't know you. Don't even see you recognise you. <laughs> like really annoyed. That's what being you know. Sometimes you just want to give them a slap. You're not allowed. You're not allowed in the modern world to give them a slap. Why you want a punch? But uh, I don't think I wasn't thinking it. But um, <laughs> no, you're not allowed. I, I do not endorse that in any way. But uh, but it was it was all very fun. And we had a lot of uh, high times, and it was all it was all great. So that's some of the things that have happened to me this week. Um, but uh, Harry, um, before we play your choice, your musical choice, and that's what this show's all about. It's about oh. you guys playing music for me. It's about me playing music to the listeners and them contributing. And a the listener coming up later on the show. But um, what's been happening in your world before you play? Can you just give us a little uh, portrait of the week? Yeah. Well, woke up yesterday morning. Uh, the girlfriend wakes up. Uh, she says. Jeez, look at the size of that. I knew immediately. <laughs> I knew immediately she was looking out the window. So I, I, I looked out the window as well. And about 50 feet away in a garden three houses down, there's a huge old tree, huge old tree. And there's an owl sat in the tree. And the owl, it's a big owl. It's about a foot and a half tall. Uh, it's looking away from us. And it, it's, it's a huge owl. And um, we back onto a massive park as well. So, it, you know, there's every chance that, you know, it is an actual owl. So I get the, I get the camera. I'm, I'm running around the bedroom trying to get the best shot of this owl. I get a couple of decent shots of this owl. I think, but it's not really good enough. What I need, I'm going to get the, the camcorder because it's got a better zoom on sure. it. So uh, I get the camcorder out and I'm sat uh, in my pants in the bedroom shooting this uh, owl with the video camera out the window. The owl's not moving. It's still looking the other way. It's not moving at all. And uh, I'm sat there for about 10 minutes and my arm starts to hurt. So I think, oh, I'll give this up. Um, 15 minutes later, go back into the bedroom. Holly goes, it moved, it moved. And its its head had, uh, had rotated, as owl's heads do. Yeah. And it was looking to the side now. So I thought, right, I'm going to get it when its head moves. So I sit there, uh, and my arm's wobbling, and because there's a long zoom on it, it's not a great shot of the owl, and its head moves. And you know the shots of the Loch Ness Monster, when people, uh, you know, they're training on Loch Ness, and then something happens, and it, the, the camera yeah, goes yeah, wobbly, yeah. you can't see what happens. So you can't really see what happens. So I don't have a tripod at home. I, I set up a contraption with a bedside table, put a book on the table, got a pen, put it under the front cover for a bit of elevation Trevor. so I could get the perfect, yeah. perfect view of this owl. And, um... Its head rotates, and I capture its head rotating. I, it, it just doesn't look right. Um, <laughs> but Holly's very excited. She's thinking about, she, we're going to burn this DVD and send it back to her parents in Australia. Look at the owl in the garden. Went, wow. into, went into the lounge. That'll be killer. They would look forward to that. <laughs> oh, they're big bird lovers. <laughs> sure. Uh, went, Who isn't? But went onto the computer, and I just thought, I'll just... Just for a chance, I'll just Google plastic owl rotating head. <laughs> sure. And the exact owl. There's one company in America <laughs> that makes this owl, and our neighbours have bought it, imported it from America. It's the exact owl. And they've gone to the trouble to go 50 foot up this tree <laughs> to put this owl up there. Just to put a plastic rotating head owl. It's 
mental. It's absolutely Harry, if bizarre. If either of those neighbours had seen you in your underpants, putting so much effort into filming their owl, it was worth it. It was well, worth I, that twelve ninety nine. It was worth it. And also, why not just send those photos anyway to Australia? They wouldn't be able to tell, would they? Well, I'm thinking of burning the DVD and putting it through the door of the neighbours, just so they can <laughs> see what a frantic morning I had, trying to trying to get pictures of this owl. I'm oh, amazed no. that you were this committed to getting some footage of an owl. Oh, it's wildlife though, isn't it? It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I live in London, you don't see that thing real. I saw a fox asleep on a bench earlier, I know what you mean. That's incredible. <laughs> yeah, it was extraordinary. Anyway, was extraordinary. anyway, my son this week. <laughs> yeah, thanks uh, very much. Not related to owls whatsoever. That's sloppy. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been the really obvious link. Nah, that would have been good. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's by a band called Lullaby for the Working Class, uh, who in the mid to late 90s were making lovely acoustic-y country style stuff uh, when Britpop was raging over here. Uh, one of the main members was Mike Mogus, who went on to do a lot of work with Bright Eyes, so you'll love this, I'm sure. It's called Honey Drop the Knife. Harry, what was the name of the tune? It was Honey Drop the Knife by Lullaby for the Working Class, and that's on their first album, which is called Blanket Warm. Hey, listen, that's old music. This show sometimes <laughs> is about new music. <laughs> and uh, it is now, because uh, obviously I like to delve into the pigeonhole, uh, the slot here at Six Music, where uh, people come in and uh, leave me music uh, for me to explore and experiment with. And sadly, I've uh, been very busy of late, so I've not been able to um, get across everything. So I'm uh, a bit behind the times, I'm afraid. So the next couple of tunes, uh, I think, are already available. I think they came out beginning of October, but uh, I don't think we played them on the show before. And uh, if you only ever listen to Six Music for our ramblings, then uh, they'll probably be new to you as well. First up, um, a single that I think came out first of October from Lethal Bizzle, Police on My Back. Police on My Back from Lethal Bizzle. I was listening to some uh, NWA in the car earlier, and they were ranting about the police, and a uh, police car passed by, and I couldn't help but feel, yeah, pigs. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's terrible, it's so easy, how, how easy you can be seduced. I remember I was driving with a guy when I was growing up, and he used to always sort of, uh, you know, driving around the kind of, um, the suburbs of Bristol, and whenever a police car would be like, oh, watch out, fuzz. I wrong, you know, or it's school, for goodness sake. <laughs> <laughs> but um, Lethal Bizzle, I think, has had some run-ins with the police in the past, and uh, I think that was uh, drawn from the pages of his diary, uh, the, um, his time stealing cars and whatnot. Um, Rufus, you've been on the mean streets, um, <laughs> being chauffeur-driven here to the studio today. Um, what do you make of Biz? Uh, I liked it a lot. It's always, it, it's it always embarrasses me how quickly and easily I can sing along with real passion to songs that aren't about me at all. Yeah. I remember there was a Miss, Miss Dynamite song about how tough it was growing up. And I, was, I used to <laughs> sing it. And I actually sang it when I was driving around the streets of Dorset trying to find somewhere to, to get fresh basil. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh. We couldn't find anywhere, and I was getting quite. Well, but I said, but I do like this one. This, this one's called "Put Him Out." Oh, you've got to put him out. He's no <laughs> good for you. And yeah. similarly, with that, I found myself really, really enjoying it. And the the rhyme with Chingford and Linford was was uh, brilliant. I liked it. Wow, mm. um, Harry, maybe you're uh, driving around uh, the streets of uh, is it Richmond? Yeah, and you're looking for maybe for some um, you know pano chocolat. <laughs> Would you be uh, furious and annoyed? Would you crank up Bizzle? I enjoyed that. Um, I'd probably get thrown out of Richmond if I was playing that uh, in a car, but um, I would like to hear it from the policeman's point of view. <laughs> Perhaps set to a slamming beat. He's going, you know, uh, young uh, youth, uh, male youth, uh, late teens, proceeding in a southerly direction in a Fiat Punto. Uh, <laughs> can we arrange one of those stinger things together? You know, I think that would be good listening as well. Um, well, I think in the interests of uh, BBC Balance, we should at least hear a policeman. If you are a policeman and you want to get in touch, 64046, uh, let's, uh, let's get, get the inside track on, uh, on the youth crime nowadays because yeah. I bet it. it's not nice out there. <laughs> <laughs> and Ruth could beatbox behind it. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Um, Sammy, you're from the rough streets of the north. Um, is it speaking to you? Um, it was speaking to me as a youth because it sounded like the theme tune to either Live, or Kick, Live and Kicking or the Saturday show in the background. Right. I can't just say which one it was, but it, it sounded like a rapping slash hip hop version of Common People by Blue. Oh, okay. Is that a good thing? Uh, no. <laughs> okay, but as it was, it was great. All right, and Tiny Dan, you love a bit of hip hop, ping. I do, yes. Um, how did that one fit with your uh, your um, tastes? Yeah, it was tremendous. I think he may have got his diaries confused with the game of Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Having said that, I, I think it's great. Uh, uh, I really thoroughly enjoyed it. It's it's the uh, logical follow up. Uh, do you remember Smiley Culture? Oh Back yeah. Back in the eighties, police officer. It's the forerunner to this song, and it's updated for you know the the hoodie generation um, and me. Sure. I like it. I like it. It's well, got nothing to do with me, but like Rufus, I love it.